What's up guys, my name is Miguel, this is Russell Wise, and on today's video I'm going to show you how to freehand the skulls on your miniatures to make them look even better than before. So buckle up brush lickers because it's going to be a wild ride. Skulls are ubiquitous in Warhammer, I don't know why, but they are all over the place. You can see them in 40k, you can see them in Fantasy, in Aatrox Sigmar, in every single game that Games Workshop has come up with. It got to a point that we can actually call Warhammer Skullhammer. That's what it is. Skullhammer. <laughs> I've simplified the technique of painting a skull with just one symbol from the Chinese alphabet. This one or few. I'm gonna prepare the bases by painting them with few colors. In this case, I'm gonna use red, blue and green. So we first start with an undertone and then with a second color on top of it as a filter. As usual, the combination of the undertone and the layer that we put on top is gonna make the color look way much better. And then we start by painting the symbol on top. So what is this business with drawing a Chinese character to draw a skull? Well, we're gonna use this particular one because the lines actually make sense when you draw skulls. You just need to sketch this symbol and then I'm gonna show you how to make this a skull. On the top horizontal line, paint a couple of lines like the ones that you see now. At the same height where the curved lines meet the diagonal lines, add a triangle in the one following the vertical line downwards. On each side and beginning from the horizontal line, draw these lines symmetrically on both sides. Where those lines meet the diagonal lines, then draw a couple of more or less vertical lines downwards, meeting the horizontal line that cuts the vertical line. Now you have to draw a curved line that goes from one side to the other side, touching the vertical line that goes across the character. Now we already have the basic shape of a skull and it's just about adding details, like eyes, making it a little bit more grim by adding a little bit more angle on the top of the sockets and teeth, etc, etc. Several things can be done, it's up to you how you want it to look. I'm gonna show you some examples now painting with brushes and you decide which one you like best. The first type of skull that we're gonna draw is the most realistic of all the three. I'm gonna add a jaw underneath the skull and for that I just need to add a couple of lines like you're gonna see now. The second skull that you see here goes great with orcs and other green skins, so we need to focus on drawing the big tusks and the jaw underneath with those. The lines are a little bit more angled and exaggerated to imply that this creature means business. The last of the three looks very evil and it has a couple of elements that you also can include in your other free hands. Now that we've done the tracing, it's time to color inside those lines using bleach bone or a similar color. And now it's time to shade with a watered down brown wash or ink. Seraphine sepia works great for this as well. Using pure white paint, we're gonna highlight the contour over the eyes, the nostrils and other parts of the skull to make it pop. The teeth are also painted white. Using a fine detail brush and some dark brown paint, I'm going to paint cracks, add a little bit of darkness onto the eye sockets and even paint the small lines on the tusks and fangs of these skulls. Just a second of your time, if you haven't done it yet, consider subscribing to the channel and activating notifications to don't miss anything from Rush Watch. Thank you! Before we move on, let's review a few key points of drawing the skulls. Notice how each teeth meets the bone area with a very acute curved line. The eye sockets give you the general vibe of a skull. To make it 
evil looking, focus on the supraciliary arch over here. The more angle it is towards the nose, the more evil looking is going to be. Now remember, you can do these on shields, you can do these on banners, you can do these in many parts of your miniatures. It is up to you where you want to put it. The skill set is exactly the same, the only difference is the size and the other details that you want to include in the skull. Speaking of details, how about adding some extra of those onto your freehand skulls? I decided to draw a simple helmet on this one and follow up by painting it with a very, very straightforward NMM technique. Adding an eye or two is very easy and it makes the skull even more interesting. You just need to paint a white circle, add a little bit of color, like in this case I'm adding blue, paint a small dot inside that, and then just add a little bit of red around the area of the eye. This is not a straightforward skull related, but it actually adds to the memento mori theme of drawing skulls on your free hands. And the idea is draw a parchment and add some text inside that goes along with the theme that you want to convey. We follow the basic same instructions, which is contouring whatever we want to draw and painting inside with bleach mode, highlighting once again with pure white. Using a very thin permanent marker is another cheat that you should totally do for writing small text or adding those extra lines that are gonna make the skulls look even better. It is a no-brainer to use this. Freehanding your own banners is such a great way to make your army look awesome. With the technique that I just showed you, you can make your own banners and everybody will look at your army with great respect. I like using paper for my banners because it gives me a lot of flexibility when it comes to painting and drawing on top of them. Paper banners are also old school, so of course it's gonna be a win in my book. I start by drawing the general shape of the banner, including the stripes that are gonna attach to the pole. Then I sketch the three skulls that I want to draw inside of it and add some extra elements and details such as horns, a helm and a long slithery tongue. After I have painted the background, I start painting now the darkest recesses and the contours of the skulls. And then I highlight with bone white and then I trace back with my sharpie marker making sure that all the details are crisp. The process has a lot of back and forth because Mistakes are inevitable sometimes and you just can fix them as you go along. Sometimes adding extra shading, sometimes adding extra highlights, not to mention how often you get extra ideas when you are in the middle of the process. Almost at the end of it, I decided to draw a few flies floating in the canvas and that made it look even more Nurgle-like. I hope this video has taught you a trick or two on how to draw skulls. But you can learn more stuff by watching this video. My name is Miguel, this has been Rush the Wash, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Un beso, adios.